friend Victor called me up about another development on a recent car project we had. I said, hey, Ian, the Grand Nationals is coming up in the next couple months. It's one of the best shows in California. We need to get the T-Bird in there. He says, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do that. Victor's been a client for a long time. They made this bubble top T-Bird show car thing, full custom body, skirted wheels, hydraulic opening, clear plastic bubble top, just crazy futuristic show car. Once I started thinking about Grand Nationals, I said, hey, we need to change the look of this car slightly. So I said, hey, Ian, do you mind if we blow another bubble? His eyes like lit up and go, I don't know if it was a sign of happiness or a sign of, oh shoot, what's this guy get me into this time? Trying to create this clear plastic bubble top was a crazy ride. We figured it out very grassroots in how to accomplish this. Had a couple failures, a lot of research and development. The way that we have set up, it's very limited sight inside the oven. Until the thing cools off, you never know how it's gonna stay in shape. It's sort of a wild west shootout trying to figure out when to turn the heat off, when to raise the lid, and you never know what you get until you take the box and open it. The one we want to blow has got to be into proportion with what that car really is. It's a spaceship coming down to Earth. This is Victor's mode of operation. He just does this with all of his cars. It seems like he just continually refines these vehicles until maybe he's happy and then refines them again. I know the car's gonna get a lot of attention because it's unusual. They're gonna go, why would this man do this to this car? And I just say, hey, well, Ian told me to do it. <laughs> I'm really excited to get this thing to the level where he wants to show it. And hey, what's not to like about an awesome car show? I get over to Victor's and he's got the whole T-Bird torn apart. It's taken back down to primer, and it's like Groundhog Day. It's like I'm revisiting ground we've already covered. Just like all my projects, I'm my worst critic. I mean, everyone thinks it's done, and I'll say it's done, but in my mind, what if? So there was a lot of what ifs on this car. My idea was lower in the front, bigger bubbles in the back. We got the classic setup. We got the barbecue grills, we got the wooden buck, and we got the box set up just like we did the other bubbles. We're gonna blow one more bubble and uh, try to refine it just a bit more. Practice leads to perfection. So we kind of revisited all our issues with the earlier model and stepped it up big time. Way more structure, new wood, stainless steel, Victor's bringing in his backhoe this time. You can see his game is in serious mode. None of these flimsy contraptions to lift the unit, full hydraulic power, it's on. At this point, all the preparation is prepared. <laughs> Nothing to it but to do it. Light this thing and let's get it on. It's really hard to compare this to anything else. It really is more a leap of faith than any other contrived recipe. I know the scenario that goes on, you heat the plastic up and you get a shape, but none of them have come out the same, so I don't know how to dial this process in. I just know we get some kind of result every time. All right, everything's on low, box is shut. Victor's the main cheerleader in this event. He's convinced that it's gonna happen, but I'm trying to come up with a defined result. That's the real challenge. Are we ready to fire her up or what? And I said, well, let's go for it. And me, I mean, go, 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 go. And he says, slow down. I said, no, Ian, we already know how you've already done three or four. This one should go easy. Well, we got kind of a weird issue. Look how wrinkled up it's getting. You know, we rebuilt all this and insulated it so good. It's on low and we're already at target temperature after 15 minutes. He's got his little heat measuring mechanism or device, you know, going all around. He goes, oh man, this thing's heating up too fast. This is where the alarm bells start to go off. When you change one thing, you change everything. We refined the whole unit and now all the calibration is off. 
for 330. Sides though, where we really want it to come up are only at 320. So the center of it's definitely hot, but the sides aren't. Well, we're not getting consistent heat. The back is 20 degrees cooler than the front. We're just having inconsistent heating issues here. You know, one minute I feel like we're winning, the next minute we're failing. I'm adjusting the grills. I'm trying to adapt to the current conditions. Bottom line is the plastic is heated up. We got to do it right now. We got one last shot at this, so it has to be right. It seems to be doing what we want. All we got to do now is pull it out and see. Oh! Captain, did we get it? We maximized our potential. I'm just leaving it up here for a few. I'm gonna let this thing cool down. It's good, it's just the top bubble needs to go in just a little. You want it to be a little bit smaller? Yeah, a there? little bit smaller on the top bubble. Everything looks good. Victor is looking it over. He wants the front of the bubble to be a little bit smaller, so I gotta let some air out of it. Yeah, I think it's about there. We pull it out of the oven, and in looking it over, as time passes, it's deflated. We lost all that definition, man. Let's try to blow it up again. It all went away. I took a shot, tried to add more air to it, but it's already hardened. It's not blowing back up. Ah, oh, man, we didn't get it. It's off the buck. There's no more shape in the back. I think it's a loss. We get the bubble out of the oven, and it's not only deflated where he wanted it to, but it deflated where we don't want it to. And at this point, you know, I just look over at Ian, and I didn't know if there's anything more he could do to save this bubble. It's cooling off at a rapid rate. Last ditch effort, the only thing I can come up with is put it back in the oven. Try to reheat it, try to save it. It's a turn the barbecue grills back on. We're going to reheat this thing and inflate it again. I know this is our last try at this. It's our last sheet of acrylic. I'm not giving up. We got to get this. Victor's a great client because at times like this, he keeps his head together. <laughs> Somebody might fall apart in a crisis situation. This is how he rolls. I'm that guy that just thinks these crazy things up and hope they work. I mean, I'm even crossing my fingers now. Where we're gonna end up, nobody knows. I think Victor's kind of an adrenaline junkie. <laughs> he just likes to go for it. I'm running around trying to get this thing heated evenly and then slowly let the air in. It looks like it's working. Seems to be doing just what it did before. It's taking its shape again. It's a good sign. Just gonna let it cool like this and not take the air off until it's solid. I am totally lucky that this thing reinflated. Completely dodged a bullet. It was a total fail. Looks like it's gonna recover. And, and I'm glad that we did what we did because originally <clears throat> the front bubble was too big. It was gonna look like a baseball cap. And it did deflate probably yeah. two or three inches. Way better, yeah. Victor and I are walking around looking at it, and it seems like we got what we needed, but you never know until it's out of the box and right side up. Victor's got his measuring tape, getting all science on it. I'm not going to be convinced until we see it on the car. It's like, what the hell is that? Hey, it's some kind of cocoon alien being coming down to Earth to visit Trump. <laughs> Just like with the setup, there's a lot of tear down. I let the thing cool, unbolt it, unscrew it from the backboard, trim it out before you can even see it in place. This is it. <laughs> it's our last chance. It's this or nothing. <laughs> We go and put it on top of the car. No one says nothing. It's like, I didn't want to look at him. He didn't want to look at me. 
This is a really crazy shape. <laughs> Ran it in next to the car, checked it out. It's definitely wild. I just don't know if we need it that wild. Firstly, we're trying to create this unique shape that no one's ever done. And secondly, we're trying to make the car look better for it. So it's kind of a two-fold approach. The ribs I love, but to me, the car's got a flow. The back flows, it's a little high on the front. I, I'm not sure it's working. And I said, Ian, you achieved what I wanted you to achieve, but it doesn't go into proportion with the car. It's flowing in the back. To me, this should be coming from this point. Just because Ian wanted a bubble and a bubble and a bubble and a bubble, well, he gave me all these bubbles, and I'm like, no, I don't know. I have one too many bubbles. <laughs> Sometimes bigger isn't always better. I mean, it's an amazing plastic sculpture for sure, but it sort of dwarfs the, the proportions of the vehicle itself. I got an idea that just might remedy the situation. Looking at this latest bubble on the T-Bird, I'm not sure it's working. I got an idea that just might remedy the situation. Whenever he says he has an idea, I don't know what to expect, but I, I almost know it's a solution. Sometimes you gotta take things to the extreme to realize it may not be better. The whole grass is greener on the other side scenario sometimes doesn't stand up. Got me thinking about one of the earlier ones we made. The second bubble we blew was actually really nice. It was almost like a chop top. It was pretty low, super streamlined, just a perfect shape. Ian said, hey, remember the second bubble we did like a while back? I said, yeah. And luckily, I don't want to say hoarder, but I don't get rid of nada. I told Victor about my idea to use that bubble, and he ran with it. Now that we got this old bubble, it has a different flavor. Now it even goes more into the spaceship looking kind of deal. So I'm thinking, hey, I'm going to redo the paint. I call my airbrush guy, you know, the wrap guy. I'm going to change this thing all up. Victor had some really cool paint ideas, and that just set it off. I'm really looking forward to taking this thing to the Roadster Show, just to show off the design that we did on this car, just out of this world. It's a three-day event. Victor's gonna get here over the weekend. I wanted to get here right off the bat. As soon as the doors open, before it gets too crowded, I wanted to check this car out. Finally got this car finished. The reason we decided to go with the smaller bubble is it just looked more streamlined. We made all those crazy accomplishments with the ridges and everything else, and in the end, we just felt like Maybe that showed the car off better. It's got a really slick, low, streamlined look. The show just opened. We got loaded in. People are on their way. I'm interested to see what the response is. The cool thing about this car show is everybody's here. A lot of old friends. Rich Evans, Gene Winfield, all the folks from the magazines, a lot of folks that watch the TV show. My friend Bill is even here. He's a client I work with on a few projects in the past. He's checking out the bubble top, and he's all questions. This looks different than when I saw it. Yeah, he keeps changing it. The main thing people are asking besides what is it is why the heck does it look so different from the prior build on the TV show? The answer is Victor. He's always changing his mind. I hate to say it, but Victor, you keep doing better. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. He's never done with this thing, so. Yeah. Looks great. For me, the choice in the bubble seals the deal. This car looks fast, standing still. Victor topped it off with this amazing graphic, and the vinyl wrap, and then he candy clear coated over it. The car really looks 10 miles deep. Enough of this T-Bird. I mean, I've freaking labored over this thing for years. It's nice for me to see it complete. I'm here for the car show. I want to see what's fresh and new. There's 
every different style of car here, the one thing in common is that they're all super refined. This is top-notch event. Gotta check out the low riders. This is where it's happening. I'm just always fascinated with the paint jobs on these cars. The hours they just spend on a paint job, it's like it takes as long to build a car as it does to paint it. Look how the pinstriping just freaking lights up on this. It's out of control. Look at the engine lid on this thing. That's probably vacuum form, but the same thing. It's definitely acrylic. Early blown VW engine. That's freaking epic. It's like a bubble top for the engine. There's tons of 50s cars here. You know, that's when the scene was really in its heyday. So the Tri-5 Chevy exhibit is in this building, and you can see they got them dialed in. In a room full of Tri-5 Chevys, guess which one I'm looking at? Oh, yes. This is my pick. This is a car built by Gary Wales. I was introduced to him at the Pasadena Art Center show. If you don't know his name, look it up. He's incredible. He should have a show, not me. <laughs> built these giant vehicles out of antique truck parts. He builds hot rods out of super nice, like Rolls Royce parts. Just incredible craftsman. When I grow up, I want to be just like him. Amber Award is not a color, it is an acronym. America's Most Beautiful Roadster, that's what the Amber stands for. And it's like the world-class, best of the best, most beautiful roadster. This room is all the Amber Award contenders, and if I had to pick one, this is my pick. Well, this thing is completely customized, every bit of it, but I like the fact that it doesn't try too hard to look expensive. <laughs> It's easy to just get carried away with million dollar schemes and this thing is just classy. This is what we need more of. Walking around the show, I mean, there's a lot of nice stuff. It's also pretty predictable. I walk up on this one thing and I don't even know how to react. I've never seen anything like it. Whoever built this car is my hero. It's got a bar, it's got a telephone, it's got a chauffeur seat. This is the epitome of pimp styling. This makes me want to dress in a white tuxedo and entertain the ladies. What were they thinking? I need to know what they were thinking when they made this. This is one of those crazy 1960s concept cars. This is from the World of Wheels car show circuit. So it was really just like, crazy stuff to get people in the door. So you see this thing on a poster and everybody wants to go to the show. The company that's doing all these restorations is Galpin Autosports. They have a whole showroom. It's like a giant museum of awesomeness. This is the ugliest car Ed Roth ever built. It's the Orbitron. From concept to completion, it changed somewhere and now it's iconic, fully restored, kind of the missing link in the Roth uh, series. This show is off the hook, top-notch stuff. Pink Panther car made my day. <laughs> my job is done here. Victor told me to meet him at the shop. He's driving it. And seeing this car in the sunlight, it freaking pops. This thing looks even better in the sun, man. Wow. You don't get it in the building, you know? The freaking yeah, no, thing lights thing up. It runs pretty good, too. I almost got in three accidents coming home. I knew I shouldn't have drove it. Check it out. Here's our placing. <laughs> he, said, he said you won an award. Wow. Yeah, we what won. Heck, first place. And hand-built customs. There's a lot of competition in that room. Like crazy. There was a lot of high-end cars there. So I mean, to even place would have been an honor. First place is kind of like, wow. <laughs> what else was in that class? Well, we were in the honor of Mr. Gene Winfield. True fact of the matter is Gene wins either way. He's the guy that showed me how to do the bubble top. So he takes some pride away from this whole thing too because it's like, you know, kind of took me under his wing, showed me how it's done. 
and it's a great car as a result. Hey, I mean, you deserve that, the effort. I mean, you built this thing, what? Four times. Four times, well, let me see, one, two. Yeah, only four times. Right. I, I really am breathing a sigh of relief for Victor, because this is like his payoff, you know? He's all about showing his work. Finally, we get some kind of end to this quest, and he gets a trophy out of it. Thanks for all that hot, man. Look at what it's freaking great. we did. You First building place. it, me, with a little bit of input. Yeah, the thing you have is the tenacity, man. You just keep freaking doing it, you know? When I'm done with a car, I walk away from it. You just keep hammering it on this thing. Now that the car's outside, standing back and looking at it, this top was the right call. That's the thing, it didn't need all those ridges, man. This side profile with the way the windshield area comes in and then it flows right out the back. This is the right call, man. She looks like she's going at a standstill. And then these stainless trims, this is the call. That seals the deal that there was never any doors on the car, man. Looks great. Hopefully we don't see this car a different color tomorrow. Not for at least six months, I promise you. That's the big thing about car shows. You get all charged up. You see everybody throwing their ideas out on display, and it just gets me thinking about the next project. I want to get something going to top everything we've done ever for the next stuff. I mean, this car is pretty far out there, man. How are we going to top it? Well, Ian, we got this far. You won first play. All the little stuff we changed on it through its evolution. Now what?